Bible phonics practice today, we are reading the blob on Bob. And in today's class, we are practicing the ending sound ob, ob, ob. Let's go! As always, I'll read first and you listen, and then you read on your own after. Are you ready? This is Bob. Bob is sometimes a slob. Your turn, go. Good. This is Bob's pal Rob. Rob helps Bob not be a slob. Your turn, go. Good job! What is that blob? asks Rob. You try. Nice! That is from corn on the cob, says Bob. Your turn, go. Nice! You must wash the blob. Says Rob, you try. Good. That is a hard job, says Bob, but I do not want to be a slob. You try, go. Good job! Here comes a long one. Bob and Rob try to wash the blob. It will not wash off. The blob turns into a glob. You try, go! Nice! Oh no! Bob starts to sob. Do not sob about the glob, says Rob. You try, go. Nice! Rob scrubs the glob for Bob. He does a good job! You try, go! Nice! And now the final page. The glob is gone. Bob does not sob. Thank you, Rob, says Bob. Now Bob is not a slob. You try, go! Good job! In today's class, we practiced all the words with the ending sound ob, 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 ob. And now it's your turn to see how many of these words rhyme with ob and bob. Are you ready? The first word is ball. Does ball rhyme with blob? What do you think? Good! It doesn't rhyme because the ending sound for ball is all. What about the second word, knob? A door knob. Does knob rhyme with job? What do you think? Good! It does rhyme. They both have the same ending sound, ob. What about the third word, mob? A group, a mob. Does mob rhyme with bob? What do you think? Good, it does rhyme. They both have ending sounds, ob. And finally, the fourth word, sock. Does sock rhyme with rob? What do you think? Good, it doesn't rhyme because sock has ending sound, ok. Very good. 
Now it's your turn. How many words can you think of with the ending sound ob, ob, ob? Write them all down below. Take some time to think about it, and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For Comic Book Tuesday today, we are spending some more time with our good friends Benny and Penny, and today we are reading Benny and Penny in Lights Out. Let's go! Benny, what are you looking at? I can't find the moon. I think someone took it. Who? Pirates. That is silly. It's time to brush our teeth. I'm busy, Penny. My flashlight. He he he. Brush, brush, brush. Click. Whoa. Penny! Zoom. That is not funny. Benny is afraid of the boogie mouse. The boogie mouse. The boogie mouse. So are you. No, I'm not. I have a flashlight. My toys are all put away. Now I can read my book. Uh, I am thirsty. Glug, glug, glug. Slurp. Burp. You need to get under the covers. It's quiet time. But I don't feel quiet. Burp. I am trying to read. You can't read. Yes, I can. Burp. I will show you how to read. Growl. Grrr. Roar! That is not reading. Yes, it is. I'm reading my dinosaur book. Here is how you read. Once there was this little princess. Not that one. One day, the princess was sent to her room for being bratty, but she had a secret door, so she got away. And then a big mean dinosaur came and ate everyone up. No, he did not. Yes, he did. My turn. The big mean dinosaur smashed everything with his big feet. Who cares? Read, read, read. Ooh. Then the dinosaur met a princess with a magic hat. What? Let me see. There is no princess with a magic hat. That's because the dinosaur ate her up. Ha ha ha! A bug is in the room. Get off! I'm trying to read. You can't read. Swat, swat, swat. I made the bug go out the window. Now I can get under the covers. <gasps> Where is my pirate hat? I can't go to sleep without my pirate hat. Wait, I left it in the playhouse. You can go outside now. It's okay. I have a flashlight. Read, read, read. Hmm. The bogey mouse is not really real. It's just a story. Uh, Benny. It's very dark, and she seems scared. There you are. I found the moon. Did you find your hat? Yes, but it's spooky in the playhouse. See, running really fast. Okay, zoom. What happened? I tried, but my feet didn't want to go. I'll go with you. Okay, one, two, go. Quick, grab it. Oomph, pop. We did it. We did it! Huh? What is that? Russell, Russell. What if it's the bo bo bogey mouse? What if it is a dinosaur? No, there are no dinosaurs near here. Wait, maybe it ran away from the zoo or or the circus. Dinosaurs do not live in the circus. Some of them do. Russell. Oh, oh, creep, creep. Mm. Ah. Ha 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 ha! They're sure having a good time. It was just a little bug. How silly! Benny, Penny, did you brush your teeth? Yes, mummy. Yes, mummy. Penny, I'm ready for quiet time now. Will you read me a story? Yes, but nothing scary. It is a little scary. Once there was a princess dinosaur who was afraid of mice. Hehehe. <laughs> If she saw a mouse, the princess got out of there in a hurry. Eek! Help! Then guess what happened? Huh? Benny? Oh, you're asleep. Now I can have my quiet time. I love this book, Russell. Hmm. 
Mommy, Benny fell asleep. Will you read me a bedtime story? Lights out. Benny and Penny sure seem afraid of the dark. What about you? Are you scared of the dark too? Let me know down below and also share with me what are some things you liked about this story. Take some time to think about it and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For social studies today, we are exploring South Korea, home of kimchi, K pop, and the Gangnam style. Let's go! Chapter 1 Welcome to South Korea. Visit an ancient palace. Walk along a fortress wall. Eat spicy cabbage. Let's take a trip to South Korea. About 51 million people live in South Korea. Seoul is the capital. More than 10 million people live in this city. South Korea's palaces were built more than 600 years ago. Royal families used to live in them. Now they are museums. Fortress walls like these ones were built more than 200 years ago and still stand today. Visitors walk along the walls. What do you think? The fortress walls were built long ago to keep the area safe from invaders. What are some ways we stay safe now? Let me know down below. North Korea and South Korea used to be one country. Ongoing disputes have divided them in 1945. The two countries fought the Korean War between 1950 and 1953. These two countries are still in conflict with one another today. South Korea is now a presidential republic. The government meets in the National Assembly building like this in Seoul. Chapter 2 Climate and Creatures Most of South Korea has very cold winters. Heavy snow can fall in the winter. Summer on the other hand can be very hot. Typhoons can even hit some parts of the country and these powerful storms bring wind and rain like this. The border between South and North Korea is called the DMZ. No people live here. It is now one of the most undeveloped areas in Asia. It is a sanctuary for hundreds of bird species. Black bears and lynx live here too. What do you think? DMZ stands for Demilitarized Zone. It has been untouched since the war. Why do you think so many animals stay safe here? Let me know down below. The upper wetland which is here is in South Korea. Dinosaurs lived in this area 100 million years ago. Now, more than a thousand species live in the water. Water scorpions are here, so are fighting fish. Beautiful birds like swans, bean geese and teals spend their winters here too. Chapter 3 Life in South Korea Some people in South Korea are farmers. The main crop is rice. Fishing is an important job here too. However, most people live in cities like this. They live in tall apartment buildings. City streets are crowded with people. Motorcycles and scooters zoom past. Many people work in factories, others work in stores. On special occasions, people wear the traditional hanbok. Women wear brightly colored dresses with bows in the front. Men wear pants and robes like these. Take a look at this. Wearing the hanbok more often is popular now. Why? Because people like posting pictures like this on social media. The traditional hanbok has many pieces to it. You can have a look by yourself here. Family and friends love to eat together. Kimchi is a favorite Korean food. It is a spicy pickled cabbage. South Koreans also eat a lot of rice. They put barbecued beef and vegetables on top. This dish here is called bagogi. Rice cakes are a favorite snack here too. South Korea is a beautiful nation. Would you like to experience its culture? Let me know down below. Now let's go through some of the new words we learned in today's book. The first word is balance, which is a condition in which the opposing forces are equal to each other. Capital is a city where government leaders meet. Crop is a plant grown for food. Culture is the ideas, customs, traditions and way of life of a group of people. A fortress is a place that is fortified against attack. Hanbok is traditional Korean clothing characterized by vibrant colors and simple lines. Sanctuary is a natural area where birds or animals are protected. Social media are websites and apps that help people connect with one another. 
like Facebook and YouTube. And finally, typhoons are violent tropical storms. Now it's your turn. What do you think about South Korea? Let me know down below. And also, share with me some interesting things that you'd like to do if you visit one day. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. For Animal World today, we are continuing with the Safari series. And today, we are learning about the flamingos, one of the brightest, most colorful birds in the world. Let's go! What are flamingos? Flamingos are tall birds with long necks and legs. They live in warm wetlands like this. Flamingos live in large groups called colonies. They also wade together in water. Flamingos also fly in groups. They stretch out their necks and legs to fly. Flamingos eat algae and shellfish like this. And this is the food that gives them their bright pink color. Flamingos lay just one egg at a time. And the parents sit on the egg in a nest made of mud like this. When ready, a chick will break out of the shell. It is covered in white or grey down feathers, like this. Mummy and Daddy feed the chick from their bills. That's true love. Soon, the chick will join the crochet, which is a group of flamingos. Parents will find their chick by its call. A young flamingo turns pink after two or three years. What a bright bird. Now let's go through some new words we learned in today's book. The first word is algae, which is a green plant-like material found in water. Bills are the hard outer part of the mouth of birds. Chick is a baby flamingo. Colonies are groups of flamingos that live together. Crochet is a group of flamingo chicks. Down feathers are soft feathers that keep birds warm. Shellfish are animals that live in water and have shells. Shrimp. Clam and crabs are types of shellfish. And finally, wade is to walk in water. Now it's your turn. What do you think about this bright and colorful bird, the flamingo? Let me know down below and also share with me some interesting things you learned in today's book. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. For science and art class today, we are continuing with my healthy habit series and in today's class we are learning about sleeping well. If you like sleeping, this book is perfect for you. Let's go! Time for sleep. Sleep is when we rest. It's when our body and mind takes a break. Being healthy means making the right choices. A right choice might be having good hygiene or eating well. Getting enough sleep is another. During sleep, we slow down. Our body needs this time off. Yet, much is still happening inside us. What do you like to do before bed? Let me know down below. Sleep is when our muscles grow. It's when hurt tissues heal. It's also when hormones are released. Sleep heals our brain too. We're busy thinking when we're awake. During sleep, we relax. Our brain organizes our memories. Sleeping well also puts us in a very good mood. It also improves our attention. Do you ever go to bed early? Some people do before a big test or game. What time do you usually go to sleep? Let me know down below. Ask your doctor how much sleep you need each night. Most school-age kids should get 9 to 11 hours. Setting a schedule will help you sleep well. Stick to the same bedtime. An hour before, turn off electronics. Give your brain time to wind down. Avoid certain foods and drinks before bed. Don't have caffeine, and this includes chocolate. Caffeine keeps people awake. We depend on sleep to stay healthy. Just be sure to set your alarm clock. What are some of your healthy habits? Let me know down below. Now let's go through some of the new words we learned in today's class. The first word is caffeine, which is a chemical found in certain foods that speeds up activity in our body. 
Electronics are things like games and computers that are powered by electricity. Hormones are chemicals produced by our body that controls the activity of certain cells and organs. Hygiene is keeping yourself clean or other action that supports good health. To relax is to become less active. And finally, a schedule is a plan with a list of events and times. Now it's your turn. What do you think about this healthy book? Let me know down below. And also, share with me some interesting things you learned about sleeping today. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. For comprehension class today, we are reading Cinderella and the Beanstalk. Don't forget to stay to the end of the story because then we have some questions to test your understanding. Are you ready? Let's go! Jack! Jack! You lazy boy! We have no food to eat! Take our cow to market and sell her for some meat! And Cinderella, get to work! Our dresses are too tight! Mend them, wash them, press them! It's the prince's ball tonight! Is your cow for sale, my boy? She's the finest I have seen. I don't have any money, but I'll swap her for some beans. The sisters flew into a rage and threw the bean outside. Jack ran into the kitchen to find a place to hide. Cinderella shouted, Jack, look up! The beanstalk has grown high. Let's go and climb it right away and see what's in the sky. At the very top, they heard a voice that sang out, Fee, Fi, Fo. A giant godmother waved her wand, Off to the ball you go. A cloud became a carriage, And stars her dress and shawl. Jack sat up in the driver's seat, And took them to the ball. But when the clock chimes midnight, You must leave and hurry back. Your dress will turn back into rags, And your shawl becomes a sack. The prince saw Cinderella and danced with her all night. But when the clock struck midnight, she disappeared from sight. He found the shoe she left behind and set off on a ride. I'll find the owner of this shoe and she shall be my bride. The ugly sisters tried to squeeze their feet into the shoe. The prince saw Cinderella and said, This shoe belongs to you. The ugly sisters went out to climb the beanstalk, but they found that when they got just halfway up, it toppled to the ground. Prince and Cinderella were married the next day. Jack became the palace chef and the others ran away. Now it's time to do the quiz to see how much you understand the book. Are you ready? Question 1. What did Jack sell the cow for? Was it A. Money, B. Food, C. Gold, or D. Magic beans? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is D. Magic beans. Very good. Question 2. Who threw the magic beans out the window? Was it A. Cinderella, B. The old man, C. One of the stepsisters, or D. Jack? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is C, one of the stepsisters. Good job. Now question three. Who climbed the beanstalk? Was it A, the cow, B, the old man, C, the stepsisters, or D, Jack and Cinderella? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is D, Jack and Cinderella, of course. Nice work. Now question four. What did they find at the top of the beanstalk? Was it A, a wolf, B, a giant fairy godmother, C, an orb, or D, a giant? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is B, a giant fairy godmother. Nice work. Now, question five. Who drove Cinderella's carriage to the ball? Was it A, the old man, B, a cow, C, a prince, or D, Jack? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is D. Jack, of course. Good job. Now, final question. Question 6. Who became the palace chef at the end? Was it A. The stepsisters, B. The fairy godmother, C. Cinderella, or D. Jack? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. 
The answer is D. Jack again. Good job. How many questions did you get right? If you got six questions right, it means you got 100% and you're amazing. Good job. And now it's your turn. What do you think about this amazing book, Cinderella and the Beanstalk? Let me know down below. And also, share with me an important lesson that you learned in today's book. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.